recent tax changes especially in light of the in light of the tax amendment act uh, uh, that um, was actually meant by the government to cushion the taxpayers against the effect of covid-19 but at the same time we saw the taxman sneak in some of the changes that are very very uh, very rampant in terms of just changing the tax course uh, for most of the taxpayers. Uh, for me, reading the, the Tax Amendment Act, I thought that the taxman was giving with one hand and taking with the other. Of course, you guys are aware that, um, uh, you know, we've been held ransom by the IMF that keeps on uh, beating the, the president in terms of you're doing tax cuts. Are you able? Are you con, are you able to afford to finance your 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 debt budget, the external debt budget, and threatening and all that? So of course, uh, KRA was supposed to the treasurer was supposed to give some justifications on how they are going to continue sustain themselves by even introducing the various tax amendment cuts uh, that were meant to benefit the the common manager. But again, the reason and the cause for this uh, seminar is born by Kerry has become very aggressive in attacking circles and ensuring that uh, it also has um, a share of the circles revenue through bringing in some 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 taxation for circles. And even uh, though as 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 we, as we pay attention to the Tax Amendment Act and we look at the Finance Act and the recent changes. Of also of importance, I would wish that the participants will also uh, read the income tax bill that has not been passed. That has also a lot of critical suggestions that, if implemented, it will uh, actually change the landscape with regards to the taxation of uh, of circle societies. We're seeing that the KRA is becoming more aggressive, uh, is trying to introduce various tax legislation, forgetting. The, the basis or the concepts uh, underlying the formation of circles to benefit membership without necessarily having double taxation because uh, these people who serve in circles get money from their salaries, whatever they have been uh, paid, and that money has already been taxed and they serve in circle for future and to get loans and to advance their economic well-being. So if circles are not vigilant and through lobby groups have strategies to stop the taxman, he might actually forget that particular concept and really be aggressive in taxation and probably tax the whole circle income as suggested for in the income tax bill that is yet to, to, be, to be passed. So I will recommend that, uh, uh, that even as we go through these recent changes and the, the finance bill and the, the, the finance act and the tax amendment act that was just uh, uh, passed during the COVID-19 uh, uh, emergency, the participants will also read that uh, income tax bill and they'll be aware of the various uh, recommendations that the taxman wants to bring on board. So I will go ahead and uh, talk about the Tax Amendment Act. Um, it brought in some wide changes. It was passed around April, May there, during April there. And it came up with some various changes. One, it, the changes uh, cut across from the income tax, value added tax, exercise act, tax procedures, amendment for the miscellaneous fees and levies, the retirement benefits act and the Kenya Revenue Act. And some of the changes affecting circles, we will discuss them 
in my in, in this forum or in this presentation. So with regards to corporate tax, uh, please be aware that uh, the corporate tax was reduced from 30% to 25%. And this is very important when you're computing your installment tax for the year 2020, uh, you need to factor in the, you need now to use the new rate of 25% uh, as opposed to the 30% that was used in the, in the previous uh, regime. And, and you know that the installment tax, all the circles are the 30th of December um, year ending. So of course the installment on uh, 20th of June, 20th of September and 20th of uh, December uh, are all now computed on based on the 25% as opposed to 30%. So this implies that um, under paragraph two of the third schedule, corporate tax of shillings five shall be applicable for every 20 for resident taxpayers if you want to interpret it this. This uh, amendment came into effect from 25th of April, 2020. So meaning that this year's um, in, uh, installment tax rates will be based on, on that rate. Um, so in terms of our opinion, our feeling towards those particular changes, um, this uh, affecting all the residents' companies, including the circles. So reduction of the corporate tax liability shall be considerably increase the surplus distributed to the shareholder. So if this year you perform uh, the same like last year, if you overcome the effects of COVID-19, uh, assuming you perform better than you, or, or even similar to what you did uh, in 2019, we expect that your members now will have a better take home in terms of uh, dividends uh, from the, their, sh their shares and also on their interest because in tax all of them are treated the same interest on uh, member deposits and dividends are treated the same on, for withholding tax of 5%. So the, the, the money that the distributable income will be higher because the corporate tax rate has gone lower from 30% to 25%. This is the first year since the rates are into effect. Circles that intend to already have opted for installment taxes need to calculate on the installments in order to avoid overpayment because you know uh, when it goes into carries the pockets you cannot it is not easy to get it out of there in, in the farm we have a lot of tax claims in terms of overpayment which we've been trying to pursue for a, a couple of months with carries so even though we will help it is not automatic or it's not instant so please don't overpay when you are not supposed to overpay. The other issues that were introduced to it in the Tax Amendment Act is the capital allowances. Uh, this I'm saying that even as members were celebrating the cut from 30% to 25%, um, the carry was not uh, only, so the treasurer was also sneaking in some amendments that the common energy cannot easily read across the lines and especially on the capital alliance, uh, allowances. And we saw that the treasurer cutting across and really attacking the, the, the capital allowances, reducing actually the, uh, in, uh, reducing the tax uh, expenses that are, can be provided for the tax purposes. So heavy earth moving equipment, which I think most of you guys may not have, Initially, it was 37.5% per year. These are the tractors, for instance, if you're in farming, and then um, excavators, those huge uh, machineries. Uh, initially, we used to depreciate them at 37.5%, per but now we are made into that to 25% per year on a reducing balance basis. Motor vehicle, um, it was 25%, per it was retained and 25%, per but critically, uh, at least he, re he increased the commercial vehicle restricted from 2 million shillings now is restricted to 3 million shillings. So mostly for the CEO vehicles and staff vehicles and all that, initially we were depreciating only to a maximum of 2 million, but now you can depreciate uh, to a maximum of 3 million shillings. Uh, computer uh, peripherals, they were 30%, but now the taxman wants you to depreciate them only at 25% uh, year reducing balance basis, increasing your taxable profits and what the taxman will claim from your profit.
And then from circles invest in software and no wow of 30 million but there's also million shillings. I, I have argued that my audit fees should be better because I need to check the in software. Uh, but you can see that uh, now you are given a better rate of uh, of depletion of the same now from 20 percent per year to 20 um the money that you with the will perform better or you may also get um, uh, honorarium and uh, and any other benefits that are accrued to the circles performance. Farm works, I don't know how many circles do farming, but if you have a farm work, initially we were doing it 100% of the of use. Um, farm machineries, uh, on the setting up of the works. So 50% on the percent per year of reducing uh, balance basis. So uh, our opinion that this has simplified the interpretation of capital expenditure and introduced new capital allowances. Uh, as you see, there are more many varying upwards than those are that are varying uh, downwards, uh, maybe increasing actually the taxable income. So then there is complete overhaul. The capital allowances has reduced allowable rates significantly within the investment deductions being allowed to a maximum of 50%. And then circles are expected to adapt the rates for allowances, e.g. 25% for the software. There are other also other deductions that we have not put here because maybe we thought that they don't apply to you, but in case they do, like for establishment of school, hotel buildings, buildings for manufacturer, those rates also have been varied significantly. If they affect your or circle, you can also talk to us so that we can advise you what rates have changed. Like for manufacturing building, they are, initially we used to say 100% for those buildings are within Nairobi and 150% for those buildings out of Nairobi. That has come to now 50%. And also for school buildings, it's come to 50%. Hotel buildings also have been affected. So if you have investment in those particular areas, you can talk to us and then we see how we can be able to advise you accordingly. So circles are expected to adapt the new rates for allowances, e.g. 25% for the software, which is also very critical. So please um, have a tax person uh, look at your tax computations and advise you accordingly so that you don't get it uh, wrong. The other area that uh, most circles might not be very aware of is what you call the capital gains tax. And um, these are the gains that are made on, uh, on capital gains, just as the name speaks. Initially, we had exemptions, various exemptions, and the commissioner, after looking at it, various probably on the analysis and the feeling, they decided to repeal those particular exemptions. Exemptions on gains from transfer of private residence, which the owner has occupied continuously for three years. Initially, if I have a house, I have been in that house for more than three years and I sell it, there was no need for capital gain uh, but the taxman here is being unfair a bit unfair because he's telling me now i have to uh, assess myself for capital gain and repealing that particular benefit that is attributed to an owner of a resident who is disposing it after uh, within a period of three years if you have if you have occupied it for more than three years then exemption on gains from transfer of land at shillings three million or raise in value at the transfer of agricultural land or less of less than 50 acres. Again, this is an we need to come and really, really uh, carry uh, branch, tree branches and demonstrate and slip on the road to stop the taxman because he's saying that if you transfer land at 3 million or less in value and the agricultural land, you have to pay capital gain tax. So he's repealing that. Uh, that if we were really vigilant on this, uh, we will need to have uh, some taxi lobby group pushing the taxman to have some sense and also reasoning with the taxpayers. But as taxpayers, because 
we might not be aware of these things. We are very, very vulnerable. The other exemptions introduced, now something to celebrate on and clap our hands, is um, exempts gains from transfer of property done purposes of administering the estate of a diseased person where the transfer is completed within two years of the death of the disease. So again, for those who have succession issues, the taxman is saying that you complete the, that matter and settle it within a period of two years. If you do that, well and good, you are exempt from the capital gains. Act. But for most of us who don't do those succession matters for a long time, then you are um, at risk of actually paying for capital gains tax. The other issue is, um, is the, those cases that are existing in court. So if you have, um, in, in case of an ongoing court case, the exemption should, period shall be limited to a maximum of two years uh, after the case has been decided. So again, if you have an ongoing court matter regarding a, 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 a court case, you're supposed to pay the, after the court case has been ruled with regards to the succession, you're supposed to transfer that property within a period of two years. If you don't do that, again, the taxman will demand for capital gain tax, something that you need to be very vigilant, especially most of us having issues with the succession um, cases. And for the circles that are dealing in land buying and all that, you also need, as you deal with the various vendors, those are the matters that you need to be vigilant upon. And if you have limitations in the same, seek a proper tax advice so that you don't make uh, mistakes with regards to that. The other issue that I want to talk about is the, um, the issues of employment taxes. So the Act revised the pay tax brands as shown below. Again, something good for most of us who earn salary and depend on salary. Um, if you work for a circle, you, in a, you're an employee, you must be uh, getting a more money, it's, uh, assuming that you have not had salary cuts because of the COVID-19 issue, which most circles have in, you guys have continually having a, a stable uh, liquidity and cash flow. So if you are earning salary, you must have seen that your take home has increased. If it hasn't, you have to really talk to the accountant and see what is happening because the tax man is saying, if you are earning more than um, 24, 000, uh, less than 24,000 shillings, we will not tax you. So on the first 24,000 shillings, which is the first tax ban, you pay 10%. And the uh, annual scale is about 28,000. Uh, 16,616, 15%. Um, the next 16,667, 20%, and then over 57,334, 25% from. Um, so the tax ban have changed and actually just stopped at 25%, and the lower tax minimum also has increased to about 24,000, increasing your take home salary, which is a good thing as compared to what was there uh, last time. So at least for once, we can clap for the tax man and hope that this. Uh, uh, tax benefits will continue to accrue even in the in the in future so that they're not just waiting a bit and then now revert back as is always uh, with the carry but as it is now please make sure that your salary has grown if it has don't grown please talk to your finance if we don't get a, don't get a good feedback uh, please call me so that we can <clears throat> discuss that matter and help you uh, to get your computation of your pay and your increased take home the other issue also we have seen is the uh, increase of pay, pay personal relief from 16,000 to 28,000 per annum, which translates to uh, 2,400 uh, per, per month, which is also a good thing. The pay, uh, the, in, in terms of personal relief, you know that personal relief is, um, after you computed your pay, you normally dis uh, deduct the personal relief. So on a monthly basis, initially we used to use 1,408. Now we are applying 2,400 shillings per month as a tax relief, meaning that you will pay a lower pay and increase your, your, your take-home salary. Assuming you don't have so many loans, some of us get uh, pay slips that are negative after taking loans and all that. Uh, but that is the thing, if you have a take-home, that will increase because the personal relief has, has been affected. So this is applicable again to residents only. Of course, the taxman always wants to protect residents and residents people. Roles of 
So the marginal rate of tax on pension payments and the draw from 30% to 25% provided it's from a regional fund and it's made the Again, this is a good thing, as you see from that computation, that if you take your money, you draw your money from pension, especially after 50 years, uh, after 15 years, this is, will be the new rate, meaning you'll be getting more money. And then uh, before expiry of 15 years, those will be, the, your computations will be capitated at 25%, meaning that you will have a better disposable income after retirement, as opposed to using the the tax uh, the thirty percent tax ban uh, those are the the, the breaks that you, those are the areas that, that the levels that how you pay the, the tax for those particular areas so as I said the essence of this tax provision is to increase the taxpayers disposable income so it is likely to be very high uh, affecting the citizens purchasing power so the taxman is being uh, philanthropic enough to share with you. But again, my conversations with KRS staffs recently, they're saying they don't have, we don't know how we are going to react in the next uh, couple of days because they're saying they are broke, they're not getting payments and all that. And, you know, the government has borrowed heavily. So we hope that, again, we will continue to be there for some time. Uh, assuming that uh, the corruption levels are low, because again, even as they say, they don't have money. There are a lot of scandals happening. Uh, you know, the, the money even for donors to fight COVID-19 is being used. So I hope they can reach out and, and take some of that money rather than coming back to us again to tax, uh, tax us. And then bring more just rely on employment cards at their feet and cushion them from the economic um, pressure, as I said. Record keeping for VAT, uh, so imposed on all persons to keep records of transactions for a period of five years, irrespective of the VAT registration. So that issue of irrespective of VAT registration status, it has a lot of impact on SACOs, especially if you don't have a commercial rental property, you, don't, you are not applicable for VAT. But nevertheless, the taxman is saying that you need to keep your records for a period years. If you don't do that, then you are allowed to a tax offense and um, the, the, the taxman might find you uh, culpable of some really uh, penalties which might not really be very well with you. Uh, this uh, withholding tax on advertising and promotion services, so they're saying that if you do withholding tax, if you actually procure those services from non-residents, you will have to pay the withholding tax in that area. So in the long run, this will increase the cost of doing business in Kenya for non-residents. The other issue that I think affects SACOs very importantly is dividends. Increase the withholding tax rate applicable on dividends paid to non-residents to 15%. Do you have some non-residents in your SACO that you pay dividends? If you have, then if you pay them uh, their dividends, you can no longer apply the usual 5%. We are saying now you deduct them using 15% uh, so that uh, they, they fail, they contribute towards the organization. But again, uh, in our opinion, most non-resident shareholders are going to reconsider the investment in the country because once you tell them that you are having a, a bigger cut, uh, then they are going to say, we don't want, we'd rather go to Uganda or Tanzania or anywhere else in the world. But um, again, you will argue with them that you remember initially we had a, a corporate tax of 30%, which actually gave us a lesser um, amount that is attributable to dividend, a, more, a, more, a lesser amount. But now with the 25%, they are getting a higher dividend, and the taxman just want to deny them that benefit by imposing an additional, uh, an additional 5% on their dividend. Initially, it was 10%, now increasing it to 15%. I don't know if you have members who are foreigner. I know some circles are so innovative through online lending. Uh, in terms of uh, taxation for dividends, we say that for non-residents, it's 15%. Please don't tax your resident members at 15%. Uh, this only applies to non-resident members. Again, the law has a way of 
applying to numbers, the way they define numbers, those people are not registered locally for tax purposes. The other issue is reinsurance premium. The, the taxman introduced something we call the uh, reinsurance, there's something we call reinsurance premiums. When you have a, an, there's an insurance company that has ceded some insurance obligation to a foreigner company or to another insurance company, that is what you call a reinsurance, and it pays some premium, especially to cushion it against the insured, especially for those huge claims. So the taxman is saying that if you pay those premiums, then now you need to pay a withholding. Tax of five percent. Mostly, you will find that uh, these risks are always taken up by foreign companies that have capacity and muscles um, in order to uh, to handle those kind of claims. So, our opinion that this brings in some form of clarity on the applicable rate for insurance premiums that only 5% shall apply. Then the insurance and the insurance companies shall be affected by the same. So that is, it will not affect SACOs. Very importantly for SACO, if you've actually put your notebook aside, I will watch you take a notebook and really take note of this. The exercise tax, that circles pay. Peter spoke about it. But the Act has defined other fees to include any fees charged on commissions by financial institutions relating to their license activities. But importantly, it does not include interest on loan or return on loan or an insurance premium or premium based on related commissions of, or fees or commissions under in respect of loan or any share of profit, or an insurance premium or premium based on related commissions specified in the Insurance Act regulations made there under. Uh, this ambiguity in the law made the taxman to be a bit unfair because when he comes and audits you, he wants you also to, if there is any insurance premium that you have received, uh, from your members, then they want you to pay exercise tax on that at the rate of 20%. Or if there are any uh, commissions or fees and in respect of loan or any other share of profit, then now also the taxman was demanding. So effective from 25th of April 2010, 2020, by that clarity, that then gives SACO members or, or SACOs a cushion of this misinterpretation. As Peter will be sharing subsequently on some of the various tax rulings, and this has also been featured as a main dispute between CARE and SACOs as regards to exercise tax. Our opinion that this provides clarity needed, that excess duty will be charged only on license activities of The ambiguity in the previous definition of other fees has resulted in many disputes arising between circles, between financial institutions and CARE, and CARE wanted to benefit unfairly because of this. This is is this kind of disputes are expected to reduce significantly uh, going forward. There's something also we call the Tax Procedures Act. Uh, you remember sometimes back the 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 carry, uh, they promulgated something we call the Tax Procedures Act to uh, guide taxpayers on how they relate to carry and provide some of the key legislations that were missing in the previous legislation, like the VAT Act and the Income Tax Act. But there is an amendment to that act that says timelines for private ruling by the commissioner 
the, the commissioner was supposed to rule, especially when there is confirmation of an assessment, uh, meaning that you are assessed by KRA and then you, you object. The commissioner was supposed to rule that on, within 45 days, but he has extended for himself up to 60 days, effective from 25th of April 2010, 2020. So they are supposed to respond that within 50 day, uh, 60, 60 days. And our opinion with regards to this extension of 60 days give room for internal constitution, which will contribute to appropriate response in delivering a ruling. Because sometimes you found under pressure, KRA being under pressure to be timeline, they, will, they have made some very weird uh, rulings that have affected uh, that are, the taxpayer in a negative way and just accelerating your issues. However, it will be prudent if the government imposes consequences for the commissioner in case of non-compliance with the above ruling. Of course, taxpayers are always on the receiving end. So I think at that juncture, I want to stop there and invite my colleague Erastus, who will take us through the, the Finance Act uh, provisions. As you're aware that the Finance Act was brought in this year, and uh, for the first time in history, it was signed very fast by the president. In the past, it will be by September, that has not been signed. But this time, the, immediately the MPs discussed it in the parliament and it was taken to the president. It got a presidential assent and immediately the provisions in that Finance Act came into effect. It will be good to look at why this Finance Act was passed very, very hurriedly by the, the president and the MPs in the parliament, what motivated that, and look at what is the hidden agenda within the Finance Act. So I welcome my colleague Rastas to enlighten us with regards to this matter. Thank you so much. Uh, let questions keep on coming and we are going to address them. And at the end of, at some point, if you want to ask questions, you must just raise your hand and Anne can give you consent to speak. Thank you so much and welcome Rastas. Did somebody, sorry, as, as the rest of us keep up, did somebody who had asked to clarify on taxation of travel allowance, yet it is a reimbursable expense. Yeah, so I think this is um, a good question for traveling allowances, unless the, the allowance is specific, it is a taxable expense to the person who is receiving it. Um, to in excess of 2,000 shillings per day. So for instance, if you pay to the members traveling allowance uh, more than, to, if they are working from their um, absent, normally not from their usual place of office, uh, over and above 2,000 shillings, which they have not accounted for, is a subject of taxation. But again, uh, chatting with one of my, uh, the finance manager for the circle, uh, is that if, this amount, you can use the AA rates in terms of trying to determine the traveling allowance, in, um, then it will not be a taxable expense. So if you are able to subject it through mileage, but then there are also additional obligations like having a logbook to explain that. And then the other issue was, um, somebody has asked about how, how SACO's uh, file access, I think that had been addressed uh, initially. So, and do I have a rasters on board? Yes, he is. Yeah, but I can't see him. And can you take over? Rasta, are you there? Yes, I am. Kindly, uh, yeah. I would like to share my screen. Yes, yes. Uh, Ronald, I think there is a question that uh, I would like Peter to clarify. Somebody had a sort clarification on reverse VAT. She said she was not very clear on that. Probably. She might need a personalized attention, but Peter can take that to clarify. And then there was also an issue of uh, uh, the withholding taxes that uh, the banks withhold, but then they sort of like file in one batch. So the taxpayer is not able to, to claim because it does not reflect uh, in the care system. So Peter, if you are available, maybe you can try to on those two areas. All right. Thank you, Noah, for uh, that. 
I think uh, if I can start with the last issue on the bulk uh, payment, the whole in terms, uh, it has been an issue with most uh, financial institutions, the banks, the commercial banks, uh, and uh, it has brought a lot of problems, especially to circles, because you know, once with the holding taxes deducted from your payment, you should be in a position to utilize it uh, when filing your return. So that has been very uh, challenging for most circles. But then again, um, my discussions and uh, according to the information available to me, is that that has since been rectified and uh, these commercial banks are now issuing uh, certificates to each individual circle when making the payment. So uh, as it is, that problem seems to have been uh, sorted out. Uh, in terms of, but then again, before I go to the next question, uh, for the historical payments that uh, perhaps you do not receive a holding tax certificate, you could engage KRA, uh, and of course, through the financial institution that deducted that tax, and ask them to issue review a night tax generated uh, with holding tax, so that you can be able to utilize uh, the tax credit. On uh, important uh, services for the reverse VAT, as I said, it's a very, well, not very complex, but also uh, not very simple. But what should happen is when you engage an unresident uh, and they issue you with an invoice of, let's say, $1,000, you're supposed to add 40% on top of that, which is now for, uh, around uh, $140, and pay that directly to KRA as a reverse VAT. Yeah? So it, it, it's like you are charging yourself VAT. There's a way to do it uh, in ITAX. In fact, if you have filed a VAT return before, you realize the moment you select that you want to file a VAT return, it normally gives you two options. Is it normal VAT or reverse or, or VAT on public services? So that's how we should work. And uh, this is strictly on services offered by non-residents. Initially, it was only applicable to people who are registered for VAT, but effective last year, uh, in October, uh, it became mandatory for everyone to uh, account for reverse VAT on non-resident uh, payments, uh, especially for uh, services. So I hope uh, that is now clear, but uh, in case of other questions, we be happy to engage you. Thank you. Peter, you'll also need to address this. Uh, somebody who has asked a question uh, in terms okay. of... Uh... Yes, Anne? Yeah, I would want to just seek Further clarification on a question that was uh, answered, which doesn't seem to still uh, come out clearly. There was an advice that uh, when now we are doing the installment tax, you're supposed to adjust them according to now the new rates that are applicable for corporate tax. But then when Mary was answering that question, she said that if you adjust the amount that you've been doing for every quarter, then there may that may attract a penalty. So how do you address those two things, so they seem conflicting. I hope I'm clear. Yes, I think you're, uh, you're clear, and I, I think I can answer that on behalf of Mary. Uh, what she meant is that uh, uh, if you are paying a certain amount and all of a sudden you stop paying and uh, you're still obligated to pay, uh, a penalty will arise in that uh, instance. And the amount has now since reduced to 25. There will be no penalty for uh, a revision than once on the installment taxes. But then if you fail to pay, or you paid uh, the first one and the second one, and uh, you're still obligated to pay the third one and you fail to pay, then in that case, uh, uh, a penalty will arise. I hope that one is clear. It is clear now, thank you. Thank you, Anne, for that, for the assistance. Uh, apologies for the small technical hitch. Uh, I can't that is the Finance Act. You realize that uh, this is the Finance Act that had so many new provisions. And in Kenya, when new provisions are being made, they make consultations internally, they copy from our neighbors, and even make reference to international organizations before they come down to actually making one or assenting it into a law. 
So there were several uh, laws that were made effective when Ukuri Atan actually uh, read his bill and then it was ascended by the president. That is on 30th June. Among them, there were changes ranging from corporate tax, VAT, excise tax, tax procedures, and um, many others. However, we are going to focus on those ones that are related to the current issue that is affecting the circles. We will start with the minimum tax. Uh, minimum tax was introduced at the rate of 1% to all companies, not just circles. However, it will be effective starting 1st January 2021. What you realize uh, the uniqueness of this minimum tax, the agenda was to was targeting the loss making entities. In the process, this was somehow interacted with the way installment taxes might be remitted. So minimum tax is also paid in installments. That is on the fourth, sixth, ninth, and the twelfth month of the year of income, payable by 20th. And with the installment tax, they had to clarify some things. That is where installment tax is higher than the minimum tax. That means then the installment tax will be payable. But on the instance where minimum tax happens to be more than the installment tax, then the minimum tax shall be payable. By this, by this section, Kenya was joining other countries because our neighbors in Tanzania are doing the same. Other West African countries like Chad and Benin, they are also doing the same, only that we are at a higher rate of 1%. So how, how is this going to affect circles? In our analysis of the same, uh, as much as it's going to affect circles, it is in the view that it will affect only the other incomes. This is because of the principle of mutuality where when several persons join together, make contribution to a common fund, then any surplus from the same could be income that is taxable. So this is where we are viewing the minimum tax 1% is going to apply. And obviously it will affect businesses that have low margins and because it's applicable, the 1% is applicable on the gross turnover. There was another issue on digital service tax. Here the government was, was joining the bandwagon that already of the countries that are already taxing the income from the digital space. Like I had mentioned, uh, in Kenya we make reference to different frameworks when coming up with our regulations. And as part of it, we mostly make reference to the demands where they had a lot of emphasis on taxing the digital market space. So here as a country, it was introduced at 1.5%, which will be applicable on the gross transactional value that will be, will be held at the point of making payment to the service provider. However, this will be, for those uh, PEs, it will be applicable or paid by the residents and will be claimable as an advance tax. That is when you are making your final income tax payable, you will claim the DST. This is bound to be effective starting 1st January 2021. You should understand that DST is not just for a specific type of business. It's going to affect all businesses that are executing transactions via digital marketplace. And given the recent trends, people are modifying their business models to be relevant with the current situation. They are transitioning into the digital space. The traditional methods are now becoming obsolete. And you've seen similar cases in circles. There are those that are already coming up with apps just because of uh, complying with the current regulations. You should put in mind that uh, the Income Tax Act had defined the digital marketplace. This was a hint that was provided last year as a platform that enables 
a, a, a seller of, uh, of goods and services to interact with a buyer over an electronic means. So by this, I mean, when circles are, are modifying their business models, have coming up with applications, the use of the USSD, provided it's all is over an electronic gadget, and that's where you are accessing your customers and having, having transactions executed on the same, we expect a 1.5% DST tax to be applicable. This does not mean it will apply on everything. When SACO A is using the old, the old ways, the traditional ways to access customers in issuing their loans through the normal form, form applications, while SACO B, which has all the, all the form applications that are digitized, they are going to be different. You'll find the one that is using the digital platform only being subjected to this. So when you say including like mobile loans, maybe buying or registration of new members and purchase of the shares does not mean to all circles, only that those that will be executing the same over a digital marketplace or a digital platform. There was also the repeal of the non-deductible expenses Initially, these were allowable, but now they will be, they'll be non-deductible. Among them, there's the entrance fee, annual subscriptions, which are paid to trade associations, and club subscriptions, which are paid by the employers on behalf of the employees. The, the, the logic behind it is actually making all expenses that are not wholly and exclusively incurred in, in income generation or in line of business, they should not be allowable. That is the logic behind this. As much as the amounts are usually not substantial, but in a case where you do the same just to promote business, then we expect circles to, to incur some suffering on the same. This will be effective starting 1st January 2021. Some exempt income that have been brought about by the, by the initially, the, now through the Finance Act of 2020, they will be nullified. The Home Ownership Savings Plan, remember where the individuals who are allowed up to a maximum of 8,000 a month and companies where the income was up to 3 million when you earn from, from your contributions to this home ownership savings plan. Now they will no longer be effective. This was effective. This was effective then, but now starting 1st January 2021. The other exempt incomes such as um, those individuals under the employment who earn incomes below the taxable, the taxable threshold. Whatever over time they would get bonuses, other benefits, allowable benefits, they will now no longer be exempt from income. Initially, people would use this as a platform maybe to pay back to those who are earning below the taxable threshold. But now those other allowable benefits will no longer be exempt. So this will affect all the individuals Considering circles have employees, we are seeing that is going to affect more of that. There is also the Excise Duty Act. Here, you will notice, as Ronald had mentioned, they expanded the definition of other fees and they restricted this to only licensed activities. But through that, the lawmakers had to understand that they had something missing, defining the term license considering it's a raft of many services that are under the excise duty. So they had to give this provision to be redefining license, which will include any activity in Kenya that the commissioner may impose a requirement for license via a gazette notice. Basically, you realize under the Exercise Duty Act, in, with regards to matters of services, a license is basically the certificate of registration. And considering the kind of services that might be new, 
people you consider the bureaucracy that will be involved just going to get a new registration for that particular new activity but now through the gazette notice that you'll be receiving subsequently from the commissioner it shall be deemed to be subject to uh, as Ronald had described the other phase to exercise duty now that's the intention of the defining license via the finance act 2020 as you can see we've mentioned to reduce the bureaucracy that entities including circles would go through acquiring operating licenses for these activities. This will be effective starting 30th June 2020. We have another provision in the Tax Procedures Act, which is a very interesting one. There is an amnesty that has been introduced, the Voluntary Disclosure Program. The Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program mm -hmm. It will be effective for a period of at least three years, starting 1st January 2021, for tax liabilities accruing within a five-year period, starting 30th June 2015 to 1st January, 1st July 2020. Those are the, for that period, they are giving a window. For those people who are maybe not compliant, they are giving options in which you may make your emissions and they are guaranteeing the review of the penalties and interest for your non-compliance. In this case, the options they have provided where you are financially able, it means you, can, you are opting for the full remission. That is for the first year of the program, you are, you are talking to the commissioner and telling them you are in compliance situations and you are going to make your, you're going to make your payments for the principal tax liability within the first year. Then you'll be guaranteed 100% remission or waived from penalties and interest that would have accrued. That is for the period between June 2015 to 1st January 2020. This is just a night before this thing was made effective. Then option two, they are offering a 50% waiver for penalties and interest. That is if you opt to make the, or to, to declare and remit the tax liability in a period of the second year, that is in the first and the second year, that is by 2022, we'll have cleared all the outstanding uh, tax liability then will be waived at least 50% of the penalties and interest. Then there's the third option where maybe you have graduated your payments and you are considering to opt up to the third year. So you'll, be, you'll, you'll have a remission at least on 25% of the total penalties and interest. This does not mean that you won't incur some penalties and interest, but at least 25% they will be waived once you make your final or you fully pay your tax within the period provided that is up to 2023. Remember when they say this is going to run for three years, it is basically effective for three years. Until then, then unless something else comes up that they may consider extending it, then it may consider this is the only window that we have uh, for the guys who have been non-compliant, especially in the period I've mentioned, 2015 to 2020. So when you interact with me, you do a, a, you do a tax review and you are seeing your liabilities and you're opting, it's, a time, it's about a time you, you went clean with the commissioner. Then this is a window for you to go clean. So there are, there are limitations to this uh, however, for taxpayers who are currently under audit or maybe you've been notified, there is an investigation that will be coming through from KRA, then this program or the voluntary tax disclosure program will not be applicable to you. As you can see, uh, if the relief results into a refund payment, then shall only be provided if it does not result in a refund payment. So if it does result in a refund payment, that is not an option that they will opt for. Basically, they are considering just taking, collecting the principal tax between 2015 and 2020 and not considering giving out the, like Ronald had mentioned, but here they are just considering taking in the money. 
but trying to waive you in terms of penalties and interest lowering you with the other hand. So I would advise for circles, from time to time you might be clear, but when a tax review comes through, you will you realize there are some areas you are not compliant, maybe in terms of pay, maybe in terms of excise, excise tax withholding. If, if you are seeing the liability being manageable, then you can consider opting for this option. Then there's the appointment of the digital service tax agents. Uh, this Finance Act empowered the Commission with the right to appoint any agent consider it considers best suit for this purpose of collecting and remitting the digital service tax. We know currently there are some banks and circles that are already tax agents for KRA. So in case they are in one way or another interacting with the digital marketplace, then there are high chances they will be considered and their obligations extended to being to being the collection and remission of the digital service tax. So it's something that we are putting in the window there that at some point you might receive a letter, a proper communication from the commissioner that, hey, you have been considered as a DST agent. This is going to be effective. It's going to commence starting 1st January 2021. The grounds for tax appeal tribunals. The Finance Act has restricted now the presentation of documents to TAT. So when the objection process is ongoing, you are now being limited. They will, they will not accept new evidence. This, this may be going to give more time to the, for, going to give more time so that maybe an informed decision at the objection stage is made. Considering those, those clients or those circles that are issuing documents during the last minutes, usually give minimal time to the commissioner to make a valid decision. So this is a rule that's more trying to protect the decision that will be coming out at the objection stage. So circles that are already have or intend to advance their cases higher to the TAT level, it's important you take note of the of these grounds whereby uh, you will be restricted to deliver documents in the objection process is ongoing. At this juncture, to start short, I will invite Anne to take over and give us a way, a way to go on forward. Thank you so much, uh, Erastas. That was uh, short and precise. So I'll invite uh, Mary to just uh, read out any questions that have come in so that Erastas can answer them. So Mary or Paul, do we have any questions? Yes, we have one last question. Yes. Somebody has just asked the issue of uh, taxation of traveling allowance, yes, it's a reimbursement. Issues to do with reimbursement should be well supported. So if you are reimbursing for a travel, then the person you are reimbursing should provide a supporting document, in this case, maybe a receipt, so that the same should not be done. But if it's not supported, then the same should be subjected to that. I think that's the only pending question. We can proceed. Okay, I don't know whether Erastas, you have any input on that question? I think Anne, we can proceed. Okay, okay. All right, so I think at this point, according to our program, we need to break for 10 minutes so that um, people can freshen up a bit. You know, it's not so easy to be in a Zoom meeting for so long. So let's go on a break for exactly 10 minutes. So at exactly 11.45, we are back here for the next session, which uh, our tax partner, Peter Mwanja, will, taking, will be taking us through uh, regarding litigations.